Hello and welcome to this episode. So today we're going to do something a little bit different and as you can see from the title, we're going to be talking about happy mail because I understand a lot of you have been asking me about how to get happy mail partners, how to do happy mail, etc. So that's what I'll be talking about in this video and I'm also going to be showing you how I do these kind of envelopes that I send my happy mail in. I've started this recently and it's a lot of layering, it's a lot of fun, it's a art journaling technique and if you don't want to do this technique on an envelope, you don't want to send happy mail, you can use the same technique in your journal, junk journal, whatever. It's the same steps and so I'll be showing you each step in this video and I'll be talking about how you can get involved in happy mail yourself if if you want to try that if you've never tried it so i was just showing you some of the envelopes i sometimes use and for today i'm just going to use this padded envelope and i'm going to start with just gluing on some scrap papers that i have it's a great way to use up some of your scrap papers and i am just using some old book pages vintage maps papers that kind of all work together and that I think will do will, will make up a nice background so you will not see me gluing because I cut those parts parts out because I don't think you're benefiting from watching me put glue on the papers <laughs> so um, these don't stick by themselves I did put glue on them but I cut it out okay so um, going into how what is happy mail and how can you participate in happy mail so happy mail is a envelope or package and it can be whatever size you wish it can be a regular little envelope a flat envelope as well but it, the point of it is is to make someone happy so basically it's like sending a ray of sunshine to someone else and you don't even have to know that other person it's kind of like a random act of kindness as well. You just want to do something nice for someone else and you want to send them goodies that you work with specifically in your journaling or, or your product projects and you want to have someone else um, use them as well just because you think they might make them happy and because you have different products than that other person has. Even if you're in the same country, you're not going to have the same products so it's always fun to do a swap so a lot of times um, there's happy mail swaps where it's like a one-time swap you just send each other lovely things or this, so this is different from pen palling pen palling is more where you have an ongoing exchange of letters I think in pen palling it's more about the letter itself and sometimes you can add a few little goodies but happy mail is usually about sending gifts and it's nice if you include a little card or, or a letter or something as well. So I've been doing this since um, December and the way I came to my first happy mail partner was through Instagram and I believe Instagram is the very best place to find happy mail swap partners um, and I understand a lot of people don't use or don't have Instagram or don't have a phone that can do Instagram. Um, sorry, I'm just uh, have to interrupt for a second. Um, so my second stage is white gesso, and I'm just gonna put this where um, the pieces of paper meet. Um, this is going to serve as like a primer for the next step, which is going to be coloring. And this technique I learned from watching a lot of Marta's um, videos from Marimi Small Art. I used to do a lot of art journaling in her style but I haven't for a really long time and now I started doing these envelopes uh, using her techniques and, and I just love it. Um, I will link her channel below, she's awesome and um, she just rec recently published also a video about breaking the blank page for a vintage page and um, she does three different kinds and they are awesome. So. After this is dry, um, we're going to be adding some color with some 
These are um, what are they called water soluble colored pencils, and I chose some colors that are in the like neutral range, a variety of browns and brownish reds. Um, and I'm going to be using this water brush, but I'm kind of using it as a regular brush. I'm not using the water inside, but the water in a little dish that I have there. You can use any kind of brush. And if you don't have water soluble um, pencils, colored pencils, you can either use water soluble crayons or you can use pastels or you can use watercolors. So it's, it's up to your imagination. I kind of like working with these colored pencils, but I actually also really love working with crayons. So I might do that another time. Um, so now I'm just um, going over where I had put the gesso, where, where the pieces of scrap paper meet. And I'm kind of blending it out with my brush, as you can see, because I don't want harsh lines. I just want kind of more of a shading. And I am just varying the color um, on various places of the page. And then I'm also going to be dripping a little bit which I think it's, is the most fun always <laughs> so basically we are building up the page we're putting on different layers we're giving it depth and it's just so much fun to play around with these so I'll be doing that for a little while and I will continue talking about happy mail and where to find <laughs> find partners so so yeah as I was saying I was contacted on Instagram through direct messages um, to to do happy mail swaps and I've been doing them since then so about half a year for now and mostly they are one-time swaps sometimes I will swap again with a person so if you don't have a phone that that has the capability of, of like having a web browser or, or um, having Instagram you can also do Instagram with your computer you do not need a phone for Instagram I know I think that's kind of an uh, misconception that a lot of people have you don't have to post either you can just follow other people right so um, and, and Instagram I'm say I've, I, I have only just joined Instagram in December last year so I it was too much for me I didn't want all this social media yeah look where I'm now I'm making my own YouTube videos and I'm daily on Instagram so and I'm on Facebook which I never wanted either <laughs> But these things just kind of happened and, and I'm very happy about them because the community on all of these social media platforms is absolutely amazing for, for crafting, for junk journaling. I'm, I'm blown away by the support that everybody gives each other on, on Instagram especially. I just, I just love it. So that would be my number one tip is, is Instagram. And the way I would do it is, so either you look for, for a hashtag, for example, you just put in Happy Mail, and there's a Happy Mail hashtag, which has over a million posts. Just put in hashtag Happy Mail, and you will find it. And um, look at the posts there. And if there's a style of someone that posted that you like, I would say just direct message that person, ask them if they want to do a swap. Um, that's really the best way to do it. Or you just, if maybe you're following some people already um, on Instagram who are doing what you're doing or what you enjoy, just direct message them and see if they want to do a swap with you. I think that, I mean, I know it takes a bit of courage. But if you, if you direct message five people, I'm sure at least one or two are going to say yes. So um, it's, it's, it's really quite simple and everybody's very open. So I would definitely say give that a try. Now, if you don't want to do Instagram, and I understand maybe if you don't want to, another tip would be Facebook groups. If you're on Facebook, I was checking there's um, a group or I was just searching for happy mail swap and if you search for that on Facebook you will find several happy mail groups that you can join as well so that's another good option on the internet I found something called swapbot.com so it's www.swap-bot.com and there you can find swap coordinators they organize swaps 
they have specific categories and they have specific rules for each swap so that's a whole nother kind of thing sorry just going back to the video so now i'm adding some matte mod podge to seal everything in um and even though this is a matte mod podge and you can also use some clear gesso if you don't want to use mod podge but mod podge is definitely the cheaper option you will see even then when it's dried it is still kind of shiny surprisingly so if you don't like that, it, then it's better to use um, the clear gesso, which is abs well, you can get um, glossy and matte, but the matte is really, really matte, as, uh, from my experience at least. So you'll see in a moment, I'm going to hold it up. Yeah, so you see it's, it is still shiny. Yeah. So then the next step is going to be some stamps. And the stamps I'm going to show you here, I'm choosing two. So this is this gorgeous dragonfly, and then you have this Tim Holtz butterfly stamp. Both of these I got from a craft flea market in May. So I cannot give you links to those, but there you can see the description. So maybe you can find them somewhere online. So I, I hope that will help if you really want these stamps. And I'm just putting something in the envelope, my writing board, so that it would stamp a bit better because this um, padded envelope is a bit bulky. So I was worried about the dragonfly not stamping very well. I'm trying to decide which, which way it should go. And by the way, of course, I left the top right hand <coughs> part of the envelope empty for the postage. And oh, I really like how that turned out. That That's really nice. And I actually like that it didn't stamp perfect. Kind of adds to the grungy look I'm trying to give this envelope. Um, so I left that that free for the for the postage. Um, if you're going to do this in, in your journal, then obviously you would do the whole page. <laughs> you don't have to leave anything empty for the postage. So yeah, and then this Tim, Tim Holtz stamp, I just wanted a partial image there. So that's all the stamping I'm going to do. Those are kind of like my focal points. And now the next stage is going to be stencils. And I have quite a few beautiful stencils. And I am very sorry to say I cannot tell you where to get these. These small rectangular ones I also got at various craft fairs uh, locally. So no idea where you would find them. And um, a lot of my other stencils I got a long time ago. And I think this one might be by Dilutions, if I'm not mistaken. Um, a lot of these I got uh, in my time when I was doing art journaling. And I was not doing YouTube yet, so I didn't care to... Um, remember where these are from this is a really cool one that I love and I'm gonna show you the brand and the number in case you want to look for that somewhere it's really cool the really nice words on that one I'm not gonna use that today but that's that's a great one um, yeah so I, I didn't take care to note where I got these from so unfortunately for most of these I cannot tell you I've had them a really long time but these two right here are Tim Holtz I know that and I got them at a craft fair I don't know what their name is but if you search for Tim Holtz stencils I'm sure you will find these I think they usually have two of these in one pack so this is the one I'm going to be using and I'm just going to be using my Vintage Photo Distress ink that I always use for inking all of my things. And um, I apologize for any um, shaking. For some reason this time the camera was shaking badly. The camera is attached to my craft cupboard which is attached to the desk I'm working on. So whenever I do any kind of movement the whole thing shakes and the camera shakes. So I apologize. I tried to cut out of as much as possible. So I'm adding that on a few places on this envelope or on this collage, however you want to name it. And you see everything is kind of tone in tone. And now this is the last step. I wanted to add some texture paste. And I have this like universal texture paste, which I haven't used in probably at least a year. 
and I know now why I I haven't really used it because I don't like I don't like it it's too soft and you will see once I, I show you a close-up why I'm saying it's too soft and on the envelopes I did previously I had a different one and it's one that is a lot more sandy and that one is perfect I'll show you a little later the difference so this one is very smooth and soft and I don't like it it yeah it's um, it's not raised enough and um, it's just yeah I don't <laughs> I don't know how to say it I just don't like it um, so if you can if you want to get one I would get one that has more like a grip to it a sand and that gets really hard um, th those are much better so anyway going back to to finding your happy mail partners um, so this swap bot is another thing but that's like a whole different um, thing with the group organized groups but I guess that one is good if you if you don't want to give your address to a random person then I think they kind of collect the addresses or something or I don't know how they do it I've never done one of those but you can go check that one out I will link it below so that is the finished envelope and now the pretty no it's not totally done yet and and there you can see there's the dried uh, structure paste and there you see what I mean with the sandy one the grainy one from previous envelopes and that one is really cool because that one you see the letters are very exact and they're raised and they're have a really cool texture so yeah so now for the for the last thing I'm doing on this envelope I'm just going to rub over the structure paste gently with my vintage photo just to give it a little more color because I didn't want them to be white. Of course, you could also mix in some color before you apply it to your project. Then you wouldn't have to do it like this because this didn't really turn out how I wanted it to be. But overall, um, I still really love how the envelope turned out. I love the grunginess of it. And um, lastly, I'm just going to be adding a blank label that I'm going to ink around the edges and paste the paste. I'm going to glue on the envelope with a double-sided tape just to make sure it really stays on there. So um, I know a lot of you have asked me to do, to, do um, to send me happy mail and I'm I'm, I'm very very thankful for, for all of you to ask me and I have said yes to most of you who have asked me but I really have to limit myself now because um, when I agree to do a happy mail I send one in return and as you can probably imagine especially internationally the postage fees are incredibly are incredible and if you want to do happy mail I also suggest if you're watching your budget stay national because especially from the States to Europe or, or other places it is crazy expensive so that's why I can't do as many as I would like to um, it's also a time issue, but um, the postage costs really add up very quickly. So, yeah, I, I, I encourage you to give Happy Mail a try. It is so much fun. You've seen so many beautiful ones that I've received here. And uh, that's it for today. Hope you to see you in the next video. I'm running out of time. Bye.